Well, check this out, guys. It's your man JB, and in this video, we're taking another look at this Black and Decker 120 watt mouse sander. <laughs> So I'm back again with this product. Now I have already done a review on this product, but um, between me and you, it was a little while ago and it was a bit rubbish. And what I did then, unlike what I do now, is I failed to do any kind of testing of it. So it really was just a, this is the sander, let's have a look inside, and that was it. But with this video, I have used this plenty in the past now. It's, I wouldn't say it's old, but I have used it. I've had it for a couple of years. And uh, we're going to talk about it, see what it's like, and give you my thoughts on it again. So come a bit closer, and we'll take a look inside. So here it is. We'll put the case out of the way. Nothing really to say about the case other than it's still in good condition. It really is. It, um... It has done well. The case is still good. And here's the sander itself then. Yes, it's looking a little bit dusty. Look, but I told you, I've been using it. And um, yeah, I'm liking it. I really am. It's a good sander, definitely. As I may have mentioned in my earlier review, I did have the... I think it was the version before this one. It didn't look quite as good as this. And it did just burn out on me. I'm not sure whether I used it too much in one go, but this um, this one is still going good. Oh yes. So the lead the lead isn't bad. It's not that rubbery. It's quite a shiny kind of plastic. I've got another sander, a Dewalt Orbital sander, and the lead on that is a bit more rubbery. So this is a little bit more plasticky, if you like, a bit more shiny. But it's all right. It doesn't have a massively long lead. I think that's probably about two meters, to be honest. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think that's a two meter, probably a two meter lead, that one. I think ideally this should be about three meters because two meters is all right, but if you're up on a small ladder even and you're doing something up quite high, then the plug doesn't touch the floor. And if you've got this plugged into an extension lead, then you've got the extension lead hanging and all sorts. So uh, it's all right, but maybe the lead should be just a little bit longer. All the black on here, well, it's not really black at the moment, it's kind of whitey grey, but that usually is black, and this is all rubberized. So whichever position you are holding it in, you've always got a good grip on it. So I do really like that about this sander. You know, it really is covered in this grippy rubber. I would say the on-off switch is a little bit stiff. I can just about do it with my thumb. <laughs> Most of the time, anyway. Cool. Yeah, that switch definitely needs to be a little bit looser. I might be tempted just to put a little bit of lubricant in there because that really is... That really is quite tough to move with one finger or one thumb. On the back of the unit here is the dust filter. So if we can just pull that off, there we go, without getting dust everywhere. <coughs> and you'll probably be able to see inside there that that has got quite a bit of dust in there already. You can see inside here, that's where the dust is filtered. So must blow the air through here out of there but obviously the dust can't get through that filter and just lands in here so uh, that's not bad it's not bad at all I mean the last time I used this I know I did keep it going on and on for ages and I guess whatever you capture in here is better than not capturing it and it just going into the air particularly if you're using it indoors without getting too messy Let's open this up. So we just need to push these two ends away from here, like so, and there we go. So you can see all of that dust in there. Let's put that in the bag, try not to cause too much dust. Let's give it a little blow. There we go. So there's your filter in half of the 
dust collector if you like so we can just put that back together again like so now I'm not sure whether you can get an adapter that goes on the back of this so you can have a vacuum on it um, if you do know why not be really helpful and stick a comment down below that would be really good because the end is just a little bit odd shaped and with a, another sander that I've got I can just put the end of a vacuum on the end whereas that's not quite round anyway let's put this back onto here there we go so that goes on quite easily it's no problem and really the last thing we need to look at then before we give it a go is the sanding pad itself so I'm just going to take this one off and you can see it's this is an original sanding pad or maybe not original black and decker but it is an original Stanley sanding pad suitable for this machine well, I've been using a variety of the sanding pads and so these Stanley ones right here I've also bought some others which are not compatible the holes aren't in the right place and they are slightly bigger but I did find that they still do the job all right you know they're they're slightly oversized but it still sands it but I guess really you want something that fits it exactly and then what we've got in here are the actual sanding pads or discs or whatever you want to call them that you get with the unit and these are the non-clogging type these are more expensive but they're supposed to last longer because unlike this one these don't clog up now this hasn't been used but then this is a 240 grit sanding pad and it's not really rough enough for what I use it for I need a 120 or, a, or an 80 is ideal really so I haven't used that one but I have used this one and this is a 120 and even though the end of it here has worn away where I've kind of used it on the edge quite a bit uh, where my fingers are it still feels quite rough so they really do last a lot longer so it might be worth paying a bit extra for this type but you know I I do prefer the standard type especially when they're on offer in this box I do believe you get sort of 120 uh, 240 and you might get some 80s in there I'm not quite sure now it's quite a while ago when I bought it but you do get a few not many so if you are going to get one and you've got a job coming up make sure you've got plenty of spare what you will also notice where I've been using the end quite a bit it has worn away very slightly you can see here it's not a problem though because when we put a new pad on when it goes on the end in that kind of position you can still push down and sand something that's quite small and detailed now I'm going to be really cheeky and I'm going to put this old bit of sanding pad on like so and it is still rough it's still going to do something but I'm going to take one of these triangles and just place it on there like so you'll notice that it does go over the edge just a little bit which is good you do want to try and avoid bashing the side of the unit every time you're using it before I plug it in and give it a go I did want to find out the volume or the decibels of this unit so let's have a quick look black and decker mouse sander hmm I'm struggling to find it but it would be useful to know so if you do know the decibels of this unit then again stick those in the comments box so this is a 120 watts it's a little bit more powerful than the one I had before and I think that's definitely obvious when you're using it let's plug it in now what I'm going to do is keep the volume on this recording exactly the same while having this on just so you get a bit of an idea 
of how loud it is. So uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. So I'm now going to talk at the same volume that I was before. It's not too bad, it doesn't hurt your ears. Now I've got really sensitive ears, but that isn't a high pitched um, noise. But uh, I'm quite happy sort of listening to that while I'm sanding away. It would be a good idea though to wear your ear defenders. Right, let's give it a quick go. I've got this piece of MDF and on here, I'm not quite sure what this is. It seems to be a bit like uh, satin wood or something on here. So let's sand it. <laughs> Actually, I've just remembered that this is solvent-based undercoat and primer, so it's a little bit tougher. Let's give it a go on a bit of old weathered wood. Oh, I've got that sticky button. Very nice. Now look, in my opinion, if you just want a sander to do the odd job here and there, stick a bit of rough paper in it, small bits and pieces, or just light sanding, and particularly detailed sanding, then this is absolutely ideal, particularly with this kind of pointed end here. And I forgot to mention that you do get another accessory, which is almost like this bit, but slightly extended, which is quite good. Um, so anything like that, yeah, this is ideal, but if you do want to go a little bit more hardcore, then you might want to get yourself something with a little bit more power. So there you go guys, there's your updated review of this Black & Decker Mouse 120 Watt KA2500K sander. Hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to leave any questions or comments in the box down below. If you found this video useful and helpful, give us a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Oh yes, that'll be fantastic. Stay safe, keep it real, and I'll see you on the next video.